matter what storm clouds may rock, the ship of mine, the light of my Savior, will lead me safely through the night. God bless you, First Lady, Sister Hepburn. But you can sing. Put your hands together for her. God bless you. You may be seated if you can. I am overjoyed. I'm overwhelmed. Amen. She has blessed my soul. Not because it's my wife, but I was ministered to. You know, sometimes you listen to a song and you hear the song over and over again. But this one time, this other time, like you needed it more than ever, the Lord just sends it right on time. And the same song that you heard over and over, that sometimes didn't even shift you. But this time, this one time, same thing with the scriptures. And over again. But this other time. The same scripture. Comes right home to you. Inspiring you. Edifying you. And motivating you. To the next level. Somebody praise God. It's not I that live. But the Christ. That lives in me. My God. Last month, I celebrated 21 years as a child of God. Mighty long way. Coming from far. Don't look like 21 sometimes. Doesn't look like 21 sometimes, but I'm way up close to 50. Yeah, I'm close to 50. Because... Whether you check it, I'm not going back to zero. <laughs> I'm not going back to one. So if I'm even 20 odd, 30 odd, I'm closer to 50 because I'm not going back to one year old. Amen. Amen. Figure that out. Some people start to figure out my age already. <laughs> 21 years as a child of God. Amen. And... Seven, 16 years as a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And I left school in 1999. <laughs> and I was born that same year. Not 1999, no, but that same year. Amen. Do the math. Amen, somebody. But you know why I still keep that young? Because I learn how to love people. And I make sure I create no space within me for people when they have wronged me. Amen. So much. Just love people, love God and love people. And you will always look young and fresh. And sometimes it wonder when you look at some of your schoolmates. Some people were in a lower grade. Say, yeah, what am I doing or what am I not doing? Amen. But guess what? You see, when you serve Jesus Christ, it says he will beautify the meek with salvation. Give grace to the humble. Amen, somebody. So I wasn't looking like this some years ago before I accepted Jesus Christ. I wasn't so good looking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in moderator, we weren't so good looking. <laughs> Amen. But God really put his hand on me. Because, you see, sin let you ugly. Oh, you're vexed with me already. <laughs> sin allow you to look ugly. Because sin allow you to do some stuff, put on some stuff, wear some stuff, do some stuff to yourself. And if you should go back to the mirror, you do like this. Thank God I love Jesus. And I will never exchange my Jesus for anything. Because there's a song that we sing in the country. It says, mighty long way, Lord. 
mighty long way, mighty long way, Lord, mighty long way, mighty long way, Lord, mighty long way. Look where you brought me from, a mighty long way. You learned that one? It's a song, yeah. So like one line, but it's a song. Yeah, because yeah, because sometimes when you look at some of the foolishness that some of those worldly DJs and all of that and make money off. If I start sing this, I can make money. Anybody know where a recording studio is? Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way. Look where you brought me from. We're going to sing it later. The musicians are anointed from last night, so they, they will find any tune, any rhythm, any note. Amen? Even when your voice is not so good, don't worry. You don't have to be bothered again about coming to sing. The musicians have been anointed. Come with your voice and they will give you a note. They can't find it, they will make it. They are talented, they are anointed. Somebody praise God tonight. I greet the bishop of the house and the first lady, the moderator, amen, and all the other ministers and those who have participated in the service. And if you remembered last night, I won't go over that long list based upon your title that you hold in the church of God. But guess what? We are all servant leaders. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I told you Sunday morning that I'm getting ready, and when I preach for a certain period of time, I go up all the way to 12 cylinder. Last night, I hit the fifth cylinder. So between tonight and tomorrow night, prepare, I'm going to 12 cylinder. And this is not of self or flesh. I know where God can take me because I am seeking God. God said, go, son. I am with you. You see, for every appointment that I get, I seek to take time out in prayer and fasting. Doesn't matter the ability and potential and experience that I have and how well learned or exposed I am to theology. Amen, somebody. I will come up here with my theology, my exegesis, my hermeneutics, <laughs> my script, and when I'm through, I am like, what did he say? What happened a while ago? Because you see, this thing called the gospel, anybody can talk about the gospel, but you must be anointed to preach the gospel. For the gospel to be effective, you must be anointed. Look back at St. Luke and Isaiah, Jesus Christ says, for he, is a, he has anointed me. He has a what? Anointed me to preach. Hello? Look back at Jesus. There are times when he go into the temple and he preached. And then look back again. He said there was a time when he, he was teaching. So don't tell me that you're teaching or you're preaching. Sometimes I teach in Bible studies and I have to say to the church, please take me back. I'm going over into preaching. Because sometimes you're teaching and oh my God. If you're not careful, you preach out Bible studies. But it's hard to give him a, a, a preacher a mic and he doesn't preach. Hello? Yeah. But you can give a teacher a mic and he can't yeah. preach. He doesn't preach. But a preacher can teach and preach. Yeah. Preach and teach. Uh-oh. That's kind of heavy stuff for some people. Let's turn our attention tonight to Deuteronomy chapter 1. There's several people who are now tuned in from various places in the United States, in Jamaica, in Cayman Islands, because they have forwarded the link and they are now on live stream. Yeah. Greetings, everybody. Yeah. From home 
and abroad. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 5 through to 8 and there's a reference scripture of Numbers chapter 13 verse 30. Beyond east of the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law saying, The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough on this mountain. Turn and resume your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Arab." In the hill country and in the lowland, the Shephila, in the Niger south country, and on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Look, I have set the land before you. Look, I have set the land before you. Go in. Go in. And take possession of the land which the Lord swore solemnly promised to your fathers. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And to give to them and to their descendants after them. Numbers 30, 13, sorry, verse 30 from the Amplified Bible. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said... Let us go up at once and take possession of it, for we will certainly conquer it. Somebody praise God. Amen. I want to speak to our hearts tonight, brothers and sisters, on the topic, let us possess it. It's time to. Let us possess it. It's time to. The word possess means to have control of or even to say it belonged to me. Possessing is the present continuous tense. It is happening, per, perhaps always going on or possessing you can say it is in live operation. My brothers and sisters, there are some terminologies and words that I will have to define as we go on. And one of those, the word gate or gates. Because if we are going to take possession and if we are going to go into somewhere, we have to go through a gate. And don't tell me about the door because you can't reach the door before you reach the gate. Unless you go over the fence. And we're not going over no fence tonight. We're going through the legal entry. Amen somebody. Hello. Gate or gate. Gate is singular. Gates plural. Gates plural meaning more than one. Gate is the entry point to a place building or property that which is a legal or proper way of entry can be classified as a gate or gateway my brothers and sisters if we talk about let us possess it we must understand and know what we need to possess and what we need to take from and who we need to take it from the enemy is the one who have access or control over some stuff that we need. Some things that belong to us. Talk to me somebody. And don't ask me how we got control of it. He has it. And I can't afford to sit down. I don't know about you. But I'm certain tonight you're going to join me. And watch the enemy. Steer in control of some stuff or items that belong to you and your family. Satan, I come for it tonight. Oh God, help me here tonight. 
I did not travel on JetBlue 560 and sit in C, uh, seat 17. Me and my wife in 17C traveled to Norman Manley International Airport and delayed for one hour and came to JFK and didn't move until a few minutes later. Too long, 760 Northgate Drive, Long Island. <laughs> and traveled to, 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 to Brooklyn, East Flatbush. To come and parade. I set my face like flint and I'm radically ready to tell you Satan this is not one of your friends Jesus somebody better get radical with me tonight the enemy Satan is classified as the enemy if Satan is not your enemy I give you 30 seconds Put your index finger up. Hold down your head and say, excuse me, preacher. I've got to go. But Satan is an enemy to the church and to God's people. The enemy is a person who is actively opposing or oppose the things that are positive, worthwhile, substantial, righteous, and holy. Somebody help me here tonight. So the enemy is a person who is actively opposed, who actively opposes or is hostile to someone or something. So the Greek term, yes, you haven't heard any Greek from me because you weren't listening. The Greek term for enemy is ekthros. E-C-H-T-H-R-O-S. Ekthros. Meaning hostile and hateful. But then you have two kind of ekthros. You have the hostis and the inimicus. Come on somebody. Hello? Hostis refers to the public enemy. Come with me now in our church. High stuff tonight. You know? Hostis refers to the public enemy. And inimicus Speaks to the private enemy. Come on, somebody. So we have two kind of enemy fighting against. The one that you can identify. Come on, somebody. The one who is actively and publicly opposing you. You know him. You know them. But then you have the underworld. Talk to me, somebody. You have the, 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 the ones that are not easily identified because they could be sitting in the same chair with your church. They could be dining around the same table. Oh, somebody help me under the Holy Ghost tonight. Two kind of extras. The public enemy and the private enemy. So then, in a simple way, church, what I am saying is that let us take control of every entry point. I'm defining the topic and the theme now, you know. Let us take control of every entry point that leads to the ekthros, the enemy's camp. Whether it be the hostile or the hateful camp. Or whether it be the hostis or the enemy cause, we are going to take control of every entry point. Come on, somebody. Church, why do we need to take control? We need to take control, Sister Nelson, because they are, there are some persons and some things that are already inside and we need to control the entry point because we are going for them. And there are some that the enemy fighting to get inside. So guess what, devil? The church is at the gate. We need what is on the inside. And those who are on the outside ain't coming in. Come on, somebody. Somebody help me here tonight. Not coming in. And we are not going to allow you to be at ease and comfortable and think that all... All is well with those who you have. We come for them tonight. Somebody help me here tonight. 
Hello, somebody. My brothers and sisters, taking a closer look at our churches today, what can we see? I can see people who call themselves Christians who come to church contentedly. Contentedly. In a once a week basis. If it's not you, don't get vexed. Say amen, same way all. Even if you get a little crushed tonight, say amen. Don't let it be so obvious. Because sometimes you can know when some people get a little squeeze in at the message, them just silent. Even when you get it, just say, hush, darling. So you have those who come to church on a once a week basis. We understand those who have legitimate reasons, but then those who say, all right, I have church on my television. And they can come, but they can't, but they doesn't even try to. But then there are others who just can't. And nothing is wrong with like the sister in Fort Lauderdale who's tuned in and you saw the miracle. Church, their brothers and sisters, as their custom, they had their worship service. Everything is fixed. Help me now, church. For some people, for some churches, everything fixed. Everything is programmed. It's a routine. They sit. Then they stand. They listen. And they sing piously. And at the end, as if everyone is satisfied, that church received the benediction with a great amen. And they're gone. Oh, we have church. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the program, the church, that leaves no space, no room for the moving and operation of the Holy Ghost. And Bishop, if there wasn't any Holy Ghost moving here from Sunday morning, whoosh like Auntie Colleen, I am back on the next plane. If it's even a banana boat back to Jamaica. Because it's hard for me to operate and preach and minister in a place where there is no move of the Holy Ghost. And if I come to church, Holy Ghost must be in church. If I go to club, I don't expect the Holy Ghost to be at club. If I go to a civic group meeting or a rotary club meeting, I don't expect the Holy Ghost. But in church, in church meetings, Holy Ghost must be evident, must be at work. Oh, somebody don't like that. But if you think that you're at the place where you don't like how the Holy Ghost is operating, then you can. No, you say it. I'm not sending away anybody. <laughs> Just adjust. And let the thing go on. <laughs> so they sit. And then they receive the benediction. Amen. But then, where is the victory? Where is the victory? Where is the growth? Where is the productivity? They looked the same. They felt no difference. They lived as usual. Why? What is the problem, pastor? They say it's the devil. They say it's the devil. So some groups had mean business to bind and defeat the devil. This can only be done through and by the name of Jesus Christ. The reason why I believe we are all here this moment, tonight, this week, is because it has been evident that the enemy, the hostess, and the inimicus, come on somebody, is about to close in. Talk to me somebody. Come on somebody. Uh, 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 in Jamaica, Right now we have a thing that they call ZOSO. Z-O-S-O. -O, zone of Special Operation. It is another term for curfew. Curfew is where you restrict the movement of people in order to carry out a search or to do some other form of legal or lawful operation. Amen, somebody. So in Montego Bay and other parts of Jamaica, you have a thing that is called Zoso because you have high crime rate in that area, murdering and all different kind of 
um, illegal activities taking place. So you have Zoso. Tonight, I want to declare a Zoso. Will you take this? Come on, somebody. Kappa, I am, yes. But I have used my my, my experience and my, my, my lessons that I learned at law school. And I use it to in the spiritual realm. And sometimes I use the spiritual, the biblical stuff in the laws area too. So tonight I declare that this area is now a zone of spiritual operation. Somebody just get disappointed. Because you wonder where he was going and I can't understand. You better understand what I just said. I said, this place is now declared as a zone of spiritual operation. And when you have zone of special operation, you have the members of the military and the members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Hold off, hold off various areas. Stand at strategic points. Some with high-powered rifle. Rifles, come on, somebody. Some with side arms. Huh? And then you have some who search, do search and cover. Talk to me now, somebody. And then you have the, the canine division, which is the, 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 the dogs who go in and do search, and, and the search center who go in and do more detailed search. Come on, talk to me now, somebody. Hello, somebody. We're not going to have that tonight. We're not calling in the NYPD. We're not going to trouble Uncle Trump, Uncle Donald's people. But we have some people who don't need what Uncle Donald issue to his military armed force. Come on now somebody. We are already armed. Ready for the spiritual operation. Somebody help me here tonight. And I want to call you tonight to position yourself. Oh, somebody help me here tonight. Help me here tonight. Position yourself. Because, you see, we are going to invade the enemy's territory. Oh, God, somebody help me here tonight. Oh, 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 oh you, you don't understand that? Let me give you a biblical reference. In the book of Joshua, Joshua told the guys, he said, listen to me, man. You see, when we build, come on, somebody. I want some to stay at a certain point. With your weapon, come on, somebody. And with your, 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 your working tool. And some will stay at some point, And you will have them one who will blow when you hear that sound. Everybody stop working and move in that direction. Because we are going to invade Come on, somebody, talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me now, somebody. Uh, you, you see when Joshua, another account, you see when Joshua was about to invade AI? He said, listen to me, man. Set up ambush. And I want some of you to go way beyond AI. And I want some of you to stay. And it was three nights. They stayed out there in the night, cool and whatever. Come on, somebody, are you still there? Yeah. And Joshua said, listen, I am going to run ahead with the guys. And AI and those, they are going to see me running and they are going to come after me. And when they come after me, I'm going to hold the thing up. Look out, you know, listen. And when all of them would have already leave out of the country, come on, somebody chasing after me. You who are at the back, come up and take control of AI. Come on, somebody, help me here tonight. You're going to come up and, and take control. And you're going to set it on fire. Because when they see the smoke going up, that's the time they're going to turn around. But it would be too late. Somebody help me here tonight. Can I preach Bible to you tonight? Somebody help me here. We are going to invade the enemy's territory because he has some stuff. <laughs> There are some of our young people who should be here. They are in the enemy's territory. Some of our talented, gifted hands are trapped in the devil's territory. Satan, 
I come armed and dangerous tonight to tell you we need what belong to us for too long you have held them captive oh somebody worship God tonight you may be seated those two scriptures comfort you did they comfort you in terms of zone of spiritual operation yes they comfort you but watch this now the gates look at your neighbor say neighbor the reason why I believe we're all here tonight is because it has been evident that the enemy is about to close in they're about to invade again they're about to cause mayhem among the people of God. Hence I am calling for a proactive. Proactive. Spiritual. Approach. We don't need a reactive. Come on. Somebody. Because sometimes as church people we are too reactive. We need to be proactive. Until Satan I'm not going to wait. Until you kill my only son. Somebody help me here. I'm not going to wait until you create me and him. Then I come to church. Oh God Almighty. And hold up the sermon and hold up the service. I am coming at you devil. Somebody help me here tonight. Somebody help me here tonight. I'm not waiting on it until it's too late. Satan I am giving you a message. Somebody worship God. So then, the gates, entry and exit points of the adversary, we must take control of. So we must take control of the entry gate and the exit gate. Oh God. As there are many that need to get out of that camp. And there are a lot that we must bar or prevent from getting into or behind the enemy's gate. The liberal teachers are not the problem either. The worst enemy of the church is the dictatorship of the routine. Hello? I said the worst enemy of the church is the dictatorship of the routine. My God. My God. When we are satisfied with what we already are or have, then there is no room for anything to become. You don't like this kind of preacher? <laughs> but I love you anyways. And if some people just vex a little bit more, I preach harder. If you don't desire to grow, you won't grow. If you stop desiring for productivity, your life will produce nothing worthy for the church to rejoice. Yes. To this kind of church or Christian, God had a message. Go up. Possess the land. God's people don't have to stay where they are. We must be going forward. Look at your neighbor and say, we must be going forward. The church must be satisfied with what she already is or has. Or she closes herself the door of greater experience that is for her. My God. The church must not be satisfied with what she already is or has. Or she closes herself the door of greater experience that is for her. The church is not a dead monument. Pray for me here tonight, church. The church is not the Statue of Liberty. The church is not Brooklyn Bridge. Talk to me, somebody. Hello, somebody. Talk to me. The church is a living, dynamic organism that has the state of becoming. Come on, somebody. The Statue of Liberty never changes. 
except somebody go up there, polish it, cleans it down, and change the lights. Dead monument cannot do anything of itself. The church is not like that. Come on, somebody. The church is a living, dynamic organism that has the state of becoming. The church is alive. I refuse to concur that the church is in ICU. Capital I, capital C, capital U. Medical practitioners. What does that mean? The church is in no intensive care unit. So don't sorry for the church. The church is a no life support machine. The church is a living organism. Come on, nobody have to feed the church. Somebody help me here tonight. The church can do without any one of us. Come on, somebody. Because all oh, glory to God. Somebody help me here tonight. So don't think that the church, don't sorry for God's church. Don't think that if you change your membership and stop paying your tithes, the building, the Ebenezer Center won't be built. Oh, please. When you go, God raise more. You're vexed with me tonight? When you get fed up, frustrated, can't be bothered, worried, God sends more. Not sending away anybody but those who think that the church can't do without them. The church is not in an ICU. It's God's church. So Bishop, don't worry. Your best tight paying member tomorrow say I'm gone. Shake them and don't give them the right hand of fellowship. Pat them on the shoulder because they'll be coming back. <laughs> sometimes some people run away from, from stuff. And when they go elsewhere, it's worse than where they're coming from. Uh-oh. Help me here. I have one more night. Please tolerate me a little bit more. If you look at our text, one more night in this week. <laughs> or you look at Bishop. <laughs> if you look at our text, church, God spoke to his people through his servant Moses saying, Enough of your stay here. Go up and possess the land. You know, I believe God is still talking to some people. But some of us have become stubborn. Hello? Pastor, you can't tell me that. Bishop Nelson, Bishop Hepburn, reverend of this church, you can't tell me that. I'm waiting until I go home and watch TBN. I'll see if one, I will see if one of those blue-eyed guys get the same message. And if they get it, then I will come back and tell you you were right. It doesn't work like that. Come on, so You see, some people will accept the prophecy. But sometimes because you don't look like somebody who should give them a word, they refuse it and they build up a barrier. My God, help me here tonight. Help me here tonight. Help me here tonight. Come on, somebody. God can send anyone to give you a word. Come on, somebody. He, called, he didn't call Eli. He called Samuel. Samuel didn't say, boy, go back to sleep. Let me hear for myself. He said, when you hear the third time, he said, speak, Lord. Come on, somebody. Are you still there with me? Are you still there with me, church? My brothers and sisters, enough of your stay here. God, go up and possess the land. What is the implication of this command of God to his people? What is its significance to the church? Three things. And I have been trying my best to stick to the presentation and the preaching formula introduction three points and conclusion but the holy ghost just keep on messing it up sometimes i have to take it by the verse by verse formula hello somebody but well, you don't know the verse by verse formula go back and check matthew henry and all of those guys the commentators there comes a time when they they do the verse by verse so you can preach the verse by verse formula. But uh, I'm trying hard to stick to the formula that you use. to, But it's not working sometimes. It's not, it's not working. Three points that I want to cover tonight. One, it's a call to advance. Two, it's a call to conquer. 
And three, it's a call to claim, possess, and live in it. Come on, somebody. Because it's the one thing for you to claim it, but you don't live in it. It's one thing for you to possess it, but you do not live in it. You only say you own it, but you're not enjoying it. Come on, somebody. Are you still there? It is a call to advance. God is so ardent for the advancement of his people. In this passage, God says, you have stayed long, long enough in this mountain. Looking on at the enemy raking havoc with young lives and valuable stuff. Now set up your journey. Oh, glory to God. Go up and possess the land. It is both a command to leave the place where they were staying. A place where they were already accustomed to. Come on, somebody. And to advance their journey toward the promised land. Somebody praise God. The Bible specifically say land. Canaan. But by here, by, but hear me, O church. Everything is on the land. Within the land and around the land. Let us all at once possess it. Canaan. If you go back to Genesis, you'd realize that is the grandson of Noah. But it's not that Canaan. God stressed that it's the Canaan land. Come on, somebody. Not the gender, not the male figure, no. Come on, but the land. Come on, somebody. Are you still there? Canaan land means plenty. Abundance. Come on, somebody. The promised land. God's desire for his people is not to stay in a spiritual status quo. Or what you'd call the customary life. Instead, he wants us to see his, he wants to see his people progressing with great measure in their spiritual journey. Somebody praise God. My brothers and sisters, God says to Moses, come on, move. You have stayed long enough on this mountain. Come on, what mountain? Horeb. Can I tell somebody, you have reached to some stage and places in your life. You become comfortable. Because things are kind of going good. You don't desire to move. You don't desire to advance. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a call to advance tonight. Oh, glory to God. Hello, somebody. Hello. You have reached your bachelor's in science. There's the next level, your master's. Come on, somebody. Help me here. You have achieved your diploma. Come on, somebody. Move to the next level, the bachelor's. Bachelor's to master's. Master's to PhD. Am I correct? Intell intellects? I have to check in with my intellectual corners. Because I, I, I have identified them long time, Bishop. Because I read into the faces and the responses and the reactions. I say, yeah, that's my, intell my intellect corner. Come on, somebody. So am I correct? Right. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop say I'm correct. So. <laughs> so enough of your stay here. You have reached Horeb. But God say I didn't promise you Horeb. A keen and missy. You see, some people reach Horeb. And because Horeb is on the mountain. And they can stay on the mountain. And overlook. And spy out and see what's happening. And if the enemy is going to attack them, they can see it and they can put uh, uh, plans in place. Come on, somebody. But God said, listen to me, man. Listen to me. Move. Pull up grounds. I know you're a custom. I know you get comfortable. Somebody help me here. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit down here tonight. Move from Horeb. I feel the Holy Ghost telling me that somebody have reached their Horeb and they have become satisfied and comfortable. And if you're not careful, you don't want to move any further. But I come tonight to tell you, you've got to advance. Because you see, when you reach Horeb, you know, you have some people also. If you're not careful, they are critics. Serious critics. Because you shouldn't have reached Horeb. 
Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray for me tonight. You shouldn't have reached Oreb. First thing, you shouldn't have even left bondage. Jesus Christ, help me here. For some, they say you shouldn't have even passed the wilderness. For some, they say the bitter Mara should have killed you. Oh, pray for me, somebody help me here tonight. For some, they say Pharaoh should have battered you. How come you reach Oreb? I'm preaching under the Holy Ghost tonight. Some people just can't understand how you reach Oreb. But you didn't take yourself to Horeb. God took you to Horeb. Oh, glory. I wonder if you understand what I'm saying here tonight. Because you have been down there. You have been battered long enough for years. You have been down there feeding off one kind of meal. Come on, somebody. Garlic. Come on, somebody. Cucumber. Water. Come on, somebody. One diet can't change your clothes, can't change your diet because you're in bondage. But out of the belly of bondage, out of the guts of bondage, you cry out to God. Oh God, and in Exodus, our God Almighty, Exodus chapter 8, he says, I have seen your tears. I have heard your cry. I have knowledge of your sorrow. And so I am come down to deliver you. Oh, somebody help me here tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost down here. When God says he sees, he sees. When he says he's, he's aware of, he's well aware of. When he says he hears you, he hears you. If all you can do tonight is just cry, cry. Because I'm touching base with some people's reality. Surely because sand out of a high. But if you leave Egypt, you will make it to your Red Sea. And if the Red Sea did not kill you, you can make it to the wilderness. And if the Mara in the wilderness did not kill you, come on, somebody. Nothing else can kill you. Come on, somebody. I've just got to my hole. But, but don't give up on me. I'm satisfied for him. But God said I am to move. Come on now somebody. For man that says stay. But God said move. Oh pastor bishop. I don't know why the Holy Ghost sent me on these two people today. Come on now somebody. This is Horeb. But God said move up to your Canaan. Some people would never have wanted you to move from here. Because going to Canaan is going to take so much. Of your resources and you might be attacked again it might be a more challenging come on somebody but god didn't promise you what down here near 95th what, what's the street 95th street he promised you what's the street up there ebenezer You see, you see, there was there, there, there was Joshua and Caleb. Joshua, Caleb, and some other followers. But God didn't talk to Joshua. Come on, somebody. He said, Moses. You see, God not going to talk to all of you one time. Let God talk to the chief of the house. Somebody. You may not understand the message. Come on, but follow the leader. You can't have two head. Anything with two head is a monster. Go mash up something down here tonight. Somebody help me. You can't have two head in Flatbush. There's only one head and all the others are followers and supporters. Woo! Shilabo Kosanda Baha. One head. Speak Holy Ghost. One head. One head. One Moses. Holy Ghost. I have a script, Holy Ghost. Of a scripture. Of a scripture. 
God called Moses. He said, Moses, enough of your stay here. You see, even when there was an Aaron and an Ur, Moses said, if I could only get an Aaron and a Ur to keep my hand up, then victory. I'll have the victory. Tonight, I want to step on some heads tonight. Come on, somebody. Every enemy goes, I have detected a head enemy goes. Head that is a private enemy. Jesus Christ, help me in church of God tonight. Bishop Anonymous Sinners, so sometimes you have some letters. You see on the phone you have something that is called encryption. Not easily read or detected. You see, sometimes some stuff, some envelopes, some packages leave Flatbush. Tennessee. Signature cannot be encrypted. But the receiver know the initiator. Secreta Sando Libre and Tadio Candala Mahundi Sendeli Critar Lobrica Nison Tiro Tensamando Crita Suli Secreto Who Mandoli Critanda Jesus Christ, I feel some heavenly languages. Sheila Sacria, but it's one Moses. Not your night tonight, not your night tonight, not your night tonight. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. One Moses. God did not talk to Joshua. Although Joshua was a military strategist, he did not talk to Joshua until Moses was off the scene. Wait on your turn. My God Almighty, is your church praying for me tonight? Is your church praying for me tonight? You don't understand where the Holy Ghost is going. Don't try with yourself and your natural self to tell, to counteract what the Holy Ghost has detected and analyzed. Keep quiet. Let the Holy Ghost dig into it. Go. Dig it, Ephraim. Dig it, Holy Ghost. Dig it. Gatilo Satriconia. Somebody help me here tonight. Somebody help me here tonight. So God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, tell the people enough of their stay on this mountain. So Bishop has gotten the signal from heaven. Amen. You who are still contemplating if the message or the call to move from 95th Street to Ebenezer, you're still doubtful. I'm sorry for you. But God has already given the signal. Move in, Bishop. Advance. Jesus Christ, I need about 10 Holy Ghost people. To just point in the direction of Bishop and say, Advance, man of God. Woo! Advance! Advance! Nun sikita bahu. Randa le bukundiai. Somebody worship God. You see, in the text, God wanted to see the intensity of his people, people's emotion toward him. 
As the Israelites lived long enough in Hope, Mount Horeb, their passion for the promised land had grown cold. Their emotional fervor, their excitement and their exuberance for God's promise had to some extent been alleviated. It's okay here. We're already accustomed to 95th Street. No more adjustments, Bishop. No more adjustments is to die. The promise was still in their minds, but the intensity of their passion for it has waned. So God came to rejuvenate their emotions. <laughs> Go up and possess the land. Let me call on us to get ready and move out. Start pack up. Pack up. We are well able. We can pay the mortgage. Come on, now somebody. We can build the apartments. We can own it in the next five years. Somebody say five years. Five years and less. We shall. Own it. Let the church say, we have it. We have it. Jesus, Savior, help me tonight. Whatever has been lacking or blocked from you or from us, there is a signal showing that the way is clear. Come on. Don't allow only those who are viewing live to be running up and down and shouting and you who are more life than they are. Not reacting or responding to a living world. Come on, somebody. Can I tell somebody? The Holy Ghost has to tell you the way is clear. Advance. Move out. Somebody help me here. Move out. Clear. Somebody say clearance. I've just gotten my clearance. I've just received my clearance letter. I've just went. Oh, glory. Somebody help me here tonight. The way is clear. Move out. Move over. Move into your position. Can I say that again? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, there's a signal from heaven informing us that the way is clear. Move out. Move over. Move into your position. kind of troubled bishop when people before meetings and services they talk about how much problems tribulation crosses and moderation they have in their lives and they need a word and a breakthrough and now you come see the word here lose your sophisticated spirit lose yourself Receive your clearance notice. Somebody help me here. Somebody help me here tonight. Clearance. Somebody swing your hand two sides and say clearance. Woo! Clearance. 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 95th Street get clearance. Flatbush you have the clearance. Chaplins you have clearance. Bishop and the team, the Holy Ghost a clearance. Move in. Get your U-Haul. Your trail ahead. Trucks ahead. Cranes. Lord God, heavy duty this and heavy duty that. Move in. You have clearance. Somebody show clearance. Clearance. Somebody shout, I am ready to possess it. I am ready to advance. I have been stuck. 
I have been at this point for too long. Come family member. Come my wife. Come my children. Come my workers. Come my church members. We're going in. We're moving in. Though Satan is on my track. No turning back. And if the devil in your rear, roll it over him. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, drop your weapon and excuse me. For yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, loose me down here. Loose me here. I feel my seventh cylinder chipping in. Yeah, somebody shout yeah. Shout yeah. Say, excuse me, but I can't keep still. I get my clearance notice. You see, for those of us who use Facebook, when you get a message or something, there's a notification, there's some form of notification. Look at your neighbor, say notification. I have seen the notification signal. Whether it is red, green, or blue, I'm going in. Somebody worship God. Somebody praise God. Look at your neighbor, say I'm going in. Say neighbor, if it's even you standing on my will, I am begging you one moment. Move. In other words, excuse me. But I can't bother with that now. Just move there. Move, man. I sick and tired of this place. I get a sick. Somebody help me here tonight. I'm going in. Oh, somebody help me here tonight. Somebody shout. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid when the wicked lose me? Even my enemies. Jesus Christ, you're praying for me. We are my prayer workers. Come position yourself. I feel warm tonight. We are the prayer workers. Position yourself. We are there. We are there. We are there. I feel war tonight. For though an host. Though an host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me. In this Sorry security, I know you're on duty But this is a spiritual one now Somebody help me here I'm not disturbing your protocol I'm not disturbing your order, Bishop But the Holy Ghost Needs some Holy Ghost Put on your Put on your armor, soldiers Pull out your sword, warriors We're fighting in the name of the Lord Somebody worship God tonight. Look at your neighbor say we're going in. The way is clear. And I'm going in. Squeeze your neighbor hand and say neighbor. God wants you to come to a new horizon. So guess what? Let's go up. To the next level, new horizon, higher level, 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 somebody say higher level, higher level, higher level, higher level, come on Flatbush, say higher level,
hands, drop your hands. Your neighbor, say neighbor. Yeah. The, Israelites the Israelites were becoming accustomed yeah. and, contented and contented with their stay in the mountain. Yeah. What more could they long for? They had comfort, they had ease, they were in safety. Everything was fine. Why should they go to another level? First, because that was not the place where they should be. Next, they can never come to that place until they leave the place where they are. You cannot be in Canaan land and at Horeb at the same time. You have to leave Horeb and move to Canaan. Come on, somebody. There are some people who are not willing to move from Horeb because they think that they are contented. But until you can see beyond the Horeb and steer into the intent of Almighty God that He has for your life, then you'll never decide to move. Somebody praise God. So then, this gives us the principle. Sit down, those who are not prayer warriors. Don't move in a prayer mothers. Serious business as the bishop still standing. This gives us the principle that what has been should not determine what will be. Can I say that again? You've been sitting down from Sunday morning? Well, you're going to be standing with me. If you can't manage the war, if you can't take the heat, don't work in KFC. This gives us the principle that what has been should not determine what will be so for them to be in the place God wants them to be they must go through new horizons for their journey exactly true with us if we want to be a person God wants us to be we must be willing to go through new horizons of our spiritual journey what we have been should not determine what we will be or what we are to be spiritually that's why Paul says, therefore, leave in the elementary teaching and let us press on to maturity. Amen. Bible may come down here to preach, you know, you still. <laughs> Bishop didn't call a reader man and Bishop doesn't want a reader man down here. So if you want a reader man, you have to go where a reader man is. I didn't leave Jamaica to come and read up anybody. <laughs> so if you think it's a revival for read up, you're disappointed. Let the word read you tonight. Let the word fix it. You don't know what's a reader, man? Go in the book. He said, there's a, a call him seer. You know that seer is in the Bible? Yeah, yeah man. Paul says seer. Talk about seer in the book of Acts. Come on, somebody. Seer, S-E-E-R. The same person who I call witch or wizards. They can read up. Come on, somebody. We don't want any seer now. See how was then. We, we depend on revelation, prophecy, interpretation, and discernment. A man with his written life testimony says, having found that rat spoiled his paper, he said to the pastor, Oh, my testimony is gone. I have now lost my wonderful experience with God. The man had his testimony on paper. Rats came in, ate up the paper, and he went to tell pastor, pastor, my experience with God is gone. Come on, somebody help me here tonight. What I want to say to us that a crumb of fresh encounter, just a crumb, a fresh encounter with God is better than a feast of stale experience. Oh, Bishop Hepburn, you're not telling me anything new. I got that the other day and I can live of it. Go on. 
In Jamaica, they would say galan. Sorry, go on. I'm satisfied with what I got the other day. You don't need to come a fresh experience. Come on, somebody. What you got the other day have far gone low. Come on, somebody. It's no longer inspiring you and refreshing you. You need a fresh. Look at your neighbor. Say, fresh encounter. Say, leave me, neighbor. Say, leave me, neighbor. Leave me, please. Talk to your neighbor. If it's even your wife or your husband, say, leave me alone. Leave me alone here tonight. I need a fresh encounter. Perhaps after tonight or before tonight, you, have ne you will never see me like this. But leave me at the altar. He's not through with me yet. Because some people sometimes they see you run and you shout and you rejoice. And they say, what takes so and so? Must be crazy. In Jamaica, I always say, you can know when some people get barrel from farm. You can know when they have gone to MoneyGram and Western Union. Because Sunday morning, it takes a while for me to start preaching. Because they run the aisles and they have the biggest worship. Because things come from far. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you can know when some people get through with some stuff because they worship louder than anybody else. But then you can know when things not going good. Come on, somebody. They hold your praise team. All the praise team worshiping, they sit down. You don't know what I mean about you. Brother, you can go on. Sisters, you can go on singing. If you ever know what I am going through. <laughs> but then next week, Barrel Run. <laughs> next week, next week, Raise of Pay. Next week, the back money, the interest. The increase comes. Can't keep quiet. Bishop want to preach the message. Can't preach out of bones. Bishop, you better stop now. You know what God has done for me. Oh. oh, it doesn't happen in East Blackbush. Only elsewhere. My God Almighty. But our praise should always be there. In good times and in bad times. Not that you're not going to shout and I know it's human. And that's how human are made up. Come on, somebody. When things are going good, yeah, you're lively. And yeah, sometimes for me, sometimes when things are... Not, but guess what? That doesn't stop me from worship. Oh, pastor, I should have moderated today. But guess what? I'm not feeling so good. Can you ask somebody else to moderate? But then, next time when things are going good, you call up Bishop. Bishop, can I get a testimony when I come to church Sunday? You are now asking for testimony. But when you got your opportunity because things wasn't going good, that's the time you must moderate, man. Give the devil a knockout punch. Devil, your intent was to keep me down. Hold me under your feet. But I'm going to disappoint you today, devil. I've got a song. Somebody help me down here. Look at your neighbor. It's a fresh encounter. Feasting on too much steel stuff. Run belly. All right, drink expired milk and see. Sister Daya, Sister Daya, drink expired milk, steal food. The bad belly, diarrhea. 
steal stuff, give you a bad stomach. And some people have been feasting on some steal stuff. And come to your service, Bishop, with bad stomach. And bad belly. And diarrhea. And hold back the service. Because when you should be preaching and prayer mothers should be actively in church. They have to be dealing with issues because they picked up stuff. Come on somebody and have bad stomach and bad belly. We need newness and freshness. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. It's a call to conquer. To possess the promised land, the Israelites must first conquer it. Hello, somebody. In most dictionaries, to conquer means to take over an, em an enemy's territory by force. This is the picture of Israel taking possession of Canaan. Of course, the Canaanite people will not easily hand their land over to the Israelites. There must be resistance. In light of God's covenant to Abraham, the land belongs to the Israelites. Yeah. Nevertheless, the Canaanites knew nothing about that covenant. Granted that they knew, would they recognize it? Therefore, until the last drop of their blood, they will resist any invader or invasion and defend their territory. This leaves the Israelites to have no other option but to take the land forcibly. They must conquer it as implied in God's command. From this we can see that God wanted to see that his people forcibly fulfilling his purpose. Do you remember the Tower of Babel? The people of the ancient world wanted to stay in a certain place called the Plain of Shinar. God confounded their tongues to scatter them. Why? Because God wants the human race to conquer the world. Do you remember the command of Jesus before his ascension? Yes, go and make disciples of all nations. In a short while, the disciples were permitted to tarry at Jerusalem, waiting for the Holy Spirit. But after that, the church went everywhere to obey the commission from the Lord beginning from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. God wants the gospel of Jesus Christ through the church to invade the world. There is a purpose for which we are called to attain. A purpose for which we are to become. The Israelites, it was to possess and become possessor of the promised land. To the church, it is to bring the life-changing message of Christ to all lands and become God's catalyst for the transformation of people's lives. Look at your neighbor and say, let's do it. Let's advance in fulfilling the commission of our master. And as a church together, let us conquer the land. God wants to see his people, us experiencing victory. To possess the promised land, the Israelites will have to engage in battle against the inhabitants of it. And should defeat them. Somebody, are you still here? Though God himself had told them to do it. Thus giving them the assurance of victory. But it takes great faith, courage and confidence to go up and possess it. Isn't it better that they would stay where they are? For God it is not. He wants his people to leave the life of customary to a life of victory. Staying where they are would spear them from battles and challenges. But they would never experience the victory either. To experience the fullness of a victorious life, God's people must be willing to one, first go up. That is to leave the life they used to live. Enough of the life of pretensions. Enough of the life of emptiness. Oh God Almighty. Enough of the formality. Enough of the mediocrity. Enough of the mere religiosity. Enough of defeat and disobedience. Rise up. Come on, somebody, with great courage and confidence in God. Go up 
and advance victoriously. Secondly, to possess the land. That is to face the challenges ahead with great courage and faith. Oh, it is lamentable to know that many Christians and churches, so, so too are the unsaved among us. They do not have vision for their spiritual advancement in terms of living and service because they were afraid to face the challenges ahead. Therefore, they stayed in the status quo. The usual, the already existing. Come on, man. You're coming out of the usual. I'm tired of the usual. Jesus Christ, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Tired of the already existing. I need freshness, newness. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost using me to take the church to a new horizon, to a new level. Somebody travel with me, somebody go with me in the spirit. They didn't understand the command was from God. Therefore, victory is sure. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if the command is from God, then victory is sure. The problem with us is our lack of trust. And we being slow to understand that life's challenges are meant by God to give us opportunity to experience his great power. Victory does not come by way of human competence and capability but by way of man's dependence on the omnipotent God who is faithful to keep his promise come on church let's arise for we are God's conquering army and then number three it is a call to claim possess Claim it and live in it. Come on, somebody. When God came and told them to go up and possess the land, God had also reminded them that they have something to claim from him. What was that something? His covenant to them. The covenant that even goes far back to their patriarch, Abraham. Only with this covenant were the blessings promised and prepared. That include the promised land, the land of abundance. Victory over the enemies, becoming a nation, and becoming a blessing to all nations. The claim of these covenant blessings must be aggressive. And I must confess that the cowards, the doubtful, the hesitant, the lazy, and the unwilling have no part of the claiming party. Come on, somebody. My God, can I say that again? Can I say it again? I said the cowards... The doubtful, the hesitant, the lazy, and the unwilling have no part of the claiming party. My God, help me here. One must be willing, ready, and prompt to obey the voice of God. One must be diligent to follow God's direction. Oh God, somebody pray for me. One must have great faith and courage for whatever challenge he is to face, he or she is to face. Two words are appropriate to characterize him. Obedience and dependence. To claim the covenant blessings is more than using the name of Jesus in what they call bold declaration. This is only pseudo boldness. We do not have the right to declare something using the name of Jesus if we have no if we do not live if we do not live in total surrendering and full obedience to the Lord. Church, if only we have walked in total obedience and dependence to our master, we would have been enjoying the fullness, fullness of the covenantal blessings. It is sad to know that the prevailing message you hear from most churches today is about survival. Why should we worry ab about how to survive? The church doesn't have to worry on how to survive. Because Jesus had promised that even the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. Come on church. Enough of that survival mentality. We don't have to stay living in pretension, in want, in defeat and in disobedience. Go up. Go up. Go up all of us. Let us arise and possess the land. Let us experience and enjoy the covenant blessings in Christ. Let us experience and enjoy the life of abundance and victory and become a blessing to the world. Now church, let's give ourselves to God. 
Let's confess our disobedience and pride. And once again renew our commitment to him. That from now and onward. We will be walking in total obedience to our Lord and Master. Church. Let us go up. And possess the land. God doesn't want us to stay. We are where we are in our spiritual journey. To look the same. To feel no difference. And to live as usual. He wants us to rise up from the life of pretension. Want defeat and disobedience. To a life of abundance. A life of victory. A life of blessing. Come on somebody. Hello somebody. There's some people who have problem about church of God. People talking about rich. Look at you too. Blood of Jesus is against you. The cattle on a thousand hill belong to my God. What you want me as a child of God to walk around and beg, beg, beg. God forbid. Come on, open the windows of heaven, God. Come on, somebody. There are some people who want child of God and children of God to come around and borrow, borrow, beg, beg, trust, trust, credit, credit. Come on, somebody. Come on. I, I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And I release abundance. Somebody, God Almighty, I feel Holy Ghost around here. Because there are some people who have problems, you know, pastors. With us owning properties and possessions and bank The church must even have loan scheme. Lending agencies. Some of you looking at me with some strange look. Instead of church, I have to be going to some people who don't even acknowledge God. And then they turn around and throw all kind of sarcastic barbs and some kind of insults. Because you have to be depending on them for their little money and their little this. Come on, somebody. God. 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 God Almighty. Hear me tonight. Because you see what happened? Some of the people who are in charge of some agencies and some funding institutions. They don't believe in the Bible. They have sworn allegiance and pledged to secret services and agents. Some of you don't like me down here tonight. Come on or somebody. Some of them have their, their, their permanent places in dark rooms. Come on or somebody, help me here. And when they see a document come from the church. Jesus Christ. This is no normal stuff tonight. You know? So the normal people start to get upset at me and start to look at me already. Come on, this is no normal stuff. So when they see your document and your file come up on their desk. Dump your file. Dump the church of God file. Come on, or somebody. Because they have nothing to do with church and church people. God, you have to break that. God, that have to be broken. You have to change that, God. There must be a shift. Some of you don't understand, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying here. I am gone deep. Help me here tonight. You know why some people haven't yet advanced and haven't yet gone up to their next level? Your file has been stashed. Because you're oh. Because on the document they ask your religious group and you say Christian and they ask your denomination and you say Church of God. So from the seat not in my entity. Not in my organization. But who God bless. Somebody help me under the Holy Ghost. Who God bless. Don't worry about the hidden file. Don't worry about the hidden application. Because man hide it. But God know where to find it. If God be for you. I'm pulling up somebody tonight. Shanda the Kosatora Bahanda. Send the Lehman Come on, somebody. Oh, God, Bishop. I don't know what kind of anointed pulpit this you put me in. The anointing is in the pulpit. Glory! 
I hear a sound from heaven says to tell somebody that your file is coming up back. Your application is coming up back. It was hidden. It was placed in file 13. It was at the bottom of the filing cabinet. Jesus, somebody help me under the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me under the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, don't worry. Don't worry. You are well able to possess it. You see, there are some people who will bring back negative reports. I'm closing now with numbers 30. And say, so listen, the land is there. Grapes and pomegranates and name them are there. But get what, guess what? Giants are in the land. But Caleb came up. And Caleb said, hey, shut your mouth. Come on, somebody. Shut up. So they silence the people. Shut up. Yes, I agree that giants are there, but I saw them. We saw them. But come on, somebody. And, and, and let me tell you something. We are not like grasshoppers in their sight. Nothing go like that. We are well able. Giants are there. I feel the Holy Ghost, you know. Oppositions are there. Struggles are there. Resistance. Fightings. Setbacks. Refusals and rejections. But I cannot tell somebody, you are well able. Possess it. Possess it. Possess it. Possess it. Take it. Access. Somebody lift your hand and say, Access. Woman of God, don't feel any way that it's down here. I come to minister to you, although you put me up. Come here. Come down here. Come down here, woman of God. Because you see, when the prophet stayed at, when the woman made the room for Elisha, she baba baku sanda. It says that Elisha saw when the woman came. And leaned in her door, in his doorway. And he says, what do you want now? Come on, somebody. Can I tell you? I see in my spirit. There's an early release. Somebody say early, early release. I need a church down here. I need a Holy Ghost church. The anoint. Life, 
answer will sentence you to death. But God said, I hold the keys to prison doors. I hold the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Somebody had rather the Holy Ghost. Somebody on the balcony help me down here. Come down here, Brother Chin, because you're a part of the process. Oh, glory. <laughs> Not many days after, said Almighty God shall turn your sorrow into joy. Oh, oh somebody just worship God tonight. from wherever you are and the next person you come in contact just pass the hand over that person and say access and release access release access mash up the satan captain lift it up musician lift it up access release in the name of jesus access you have been denied for too long you have been refused for too long 
access, release, access, 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 release, come access, clear me, access, release, access, release, access, yes, work with him, work with him, work with him, the anointing, the anointing, work with him, access, 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 the anointing makes a difference? You know the anointing makes a difference? You know, I'm through preaching. I'm done preaching. But Sister Di, Sister Nelson, Bishop Nelson, you know what? You know that it wasn't only the Canaanites that the Israelites had to deal with in taking control, although it was the Canaanites. You had almost six or seven others Occupying the land. And if it was, if I had more time, then I'll tell you about the Amorites, what they symbolize is the, the, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Gergeshites, the Amalekites. Come on, somebody. They were all in the land. Church, for you to access, conquer, conquer and claim and live in it, you have to get rid of all the ites, all the parasites too. The contrarites, the contradictinites. My God, help me here tonight. Don't kill me, intellectuals. I'm just finding some words under the Holy Ghost here tonight. The oppositionites, help me here tonight. I am identifying them in a warfare tonight. It's warfare. Oppositionites, fightingites. Come on, somebody. All kind of heights. Criticismites. My God, help me here tonight. Don't go to Google. Don't go to 
Wikipedia and all these places. You'll never find those words. It's in the Holy Ghost dictionary. Come on, somebody help. But the heights are there. The heights are there. Stop me heights. Prevent me heights. Come on, somebody help me here tonight. Don't go any further heights. My God, Holy Ghost, help me here tonight. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm done preaching. I'm just identifying the enemies. Oh, somebody help me here. Struggle heights. Come on, somebody. Sickness heights. Come on, somebody. Hold me down heights. Don't go any further heights. Come on, somebody. Hinger and heights. My God, help me here tonight. Only when you're under the Holy Ghost, you can. Come on, somebody. Huh? Don't like me heights. All the heights. But guess what? The command from God is clear. So it doesn't matter what heights you are. Excuse me. I am come for what is mine. Hand it over. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. I am, going in. I am going in. Set your face like flint. Face like flint. Watch, no face. Watch no face. Pretty face, straight face, round face, bleach face, no face at all. Watch, no face. Just go in. Oh God Almighty, if you keep me here longer, I'm going to get a little bit radical, you know. Watch no face, makeup face or no makeup face. Come on, no somebody. Tattoo face or no tattoo face. Watch no face at all. Just go in. Take possession. Because if you look at some faces, you'll never access. You'll never move from where you are. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your sad face, your disfigured face can't stop me. From accessing what God has in store for me. So excuse me. I'm coming from far. And I need what is mine. That was a little bit of kind of uh, radical kind of stuff a little bit. <laughs> Let's come back. <laughs> Somebody shout in this place. Somebody shout in this place. Somebody shout in this place. Look at your neighbor and say, possess it. Possess it. Live in it. You have your victory. Live in it. Don't let nobody steal your victory. Jesus Christ, I need the Holy Ghost. Because, newsflash. Newsflash. Sister Nelson, it is one thing to access, possess your victory and your healing. But then it's another thing when some, you allow some people to prevent you from rejoicing in it, from living in it, from basking in it. Because you have some, some of us, it's just for me, myself, and I. And if it's not me and my family, you could go to, you say it, not me. Come on, somebody, but guess what? Leave me alone. You don't want to shout with me? I still have my victory. You don't like me? That doesn't stop me from shouting. Somebody help me here. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. I've got it. I've got it. There's something about the Holy Ghost. I can't explain, but I've got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Something, something about the Holy Ghost, but I've got it. Look at this one. Musicians, 
If I was going to have time, we'll come over and we'll just have some lessons. And... Mm. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Just in time, I'm going to praise his name. He saved us. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. You see, this is not my doing. And this is not my kind of practice because I don't, I don't, there's certain stuff that I don't pre-prepare, pre-prepare before I come here. I just wait on the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I hear the Holy Ghost says, there are so many of you have been denied, refused, rejected. Come on, somebody. But money cannot pay God. But I learned something about sowing. When you sow, you, you reap. He said that there's a man called Isaac. He sowed in the time of famine. And he reaped a hundredfold. Somebody say how it happened. Because you see the supernatural is suspended the natural laws of the earth. I said, listen, it's my time now. So in famine, he should have lost. But the supernatural stepped in and said, all right. Agricultural science. And whatever the earth should have given to you. Listen, it's my time now. Can I talk to somebody? Here is a time when the soil... It's fertile. The ground is ready. Come on, somebody. The ground is ready. And it's hard for me to invite people to sow. And I don't. I come down here with 100 US dollars tonight. Don't ask me. Don't ask me how I'm going home. I'm going home. So that for my wife and I and my children. Come on, somebody. Put it up on the altar tonight. Come on, somebody. Jesus, save it tonight. The ground, oh, glory to God Almighty. You're sowing a seed that is going to allow you to possess it. <laughs> 